okay, let's say I run a conference company and I'm going to want a bot for my next conference. The bot is going to serve as a lead generator leading up to the conference. It's going to help sell tickets. It's also going to keep my attendees updated throughout the conference. Uh, so what I'll need is I'm going to want a bot. I'll probably use ChatFuel because ChatFuel has a template for conferences. And here's the bot in, in ChatFuel and I'll be able to customize that. I'm also going to want to use AI. And so I'll probably want to use Dialogflow. And I've just created a AI agent. All I needed to do was name and save it. Finally, I'm going to use Janice. Janice is going to help me connect all of these things together. And it's going to connect my Facebook page. It's going to connect my chat fuel bot. It's going to connect my Dialogflow agent. And it's going to help me manage my conversational experience. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is add Janice, the AI assistant for bot makers, to my team. So Janice currently works with teams that use Slack as a workspace. And it's not limited to Slack, but that's currently the workspace that Janice supports. So I'll just sign in with Slack. And uh, I'm now authenticated. And I'll chat with Janice in Slack. And you'll see here Janice onboards me uh, with a welcome message. I can help you manage your conversational experiences. And Janice has a free plan. And Janice has a pro plan, which uh, gives access to all of Janice's capabilities. And I'm going to show you some of those capabilities. You can change your plan at any time and manage that right from this workspace. Let's click continue. When you add a bot, uh, Janice can help you train your AI, monitor your bot for problems, and fix problems fast. And you can connect an unlimited number of bots to Janice, and Janice will help you manage all of them. Let's add a bot. Have you created a bot already? Uh, we have. If we hadn't created a bot, then Janice will help you do that as well. We might recommend uh, uh, AI, might recommend that you use a template uh, based on your use case from ChatFuel, and might even connect you with some developers that can help you uh, get up and running. But we have a bot, and we'll just click that. And Janice asks, what AI are you using? And uh, we'll be supporting other sources of AI, but currently we support Dialogflow. You only need to sign in to Google once, and then you can access all of your Dialogflow agents right here in one click. So I'll just pick Conference Bot. Janice is now connected to this Conference Bot Dialogflow agent. And you'll continue the setup. And uh, if you use a tool like ChatFuel or ManyChat, it's just one URL that you need to drop into your bot. And if you coded a bot with a uh, framework. Um, Janice supports uh, bot platforms and frameworks uh, for Node.js and Python and Ruby. And if you're not technical, you can invite a developer and Janice will then hand the onboarding off to somebody who's more technical on your team and go from there. But since we are using ChatFuel, I'm just going to click continue. What did you use to build for your bot? And these are the bot making tools that Janice supports. We click ChatFuel. Okay, let's connect a chat fuel bot to me. There's a couple ways to connect. Uh, this template, all we need to do is just drop in a URL. So we'll copy that to our clipboard. Now let's go back to chat fuel. And you'll see here uh, there's a Janus block in this template. All we need to do is paste in the URL. And now the chat fuel bot is connected to Janus. And Janus, you'll see, has uh, in its JSON API, it has these. Uh, user attributes, messenger user ID, which uh, tells Janice who to deliver your messages to. Uh, these are the messages that are going to come from uh, Dialogflow or humans that are working in Slack. User input captures everything the user says to your chat fuel bot and passes that off to Janice. You can add other ones too. So let's add gender. Let's add locale, profile pic, time zone, last name and uh, well, first name. You can add all of them, uh, but this is going to give us more insight uh, into your conversational experience from ChatFuel. Now, what we'll want to do is let's go back to Slack. You'll see here in this step, it says you're a pro user, so you can connect uh, connect Janice to, you, to your Facebook page. Uh, so let's do that. Let's click Connect to Facebook. You can see we're connecting all the tools we use to Janice. Dialog flow, chat fuel, and your Facebook page. So Janice can help you manage the entire experience. Let's pick a page. Here's our conference bot page. Okay, continue. 
and now we're being redirected back to Slack. So there you can see that Janice says you can chat with your, uh, your bot on Messenger, and here's the page that it's connected to. And now we have some more options that we can choose from. We can train the bot. We can manage alerts. So let's actually manage alerts. I'll show you how that works. Um, let me just click this reply. Uh, so here's the alert settings for the bot that were set up, uh, conference bot. You can set alerts for all of your other bots or all of them uh, have universal alert settings. Uh, you can trigger alerts for when your bot is non-responsive. Janice will monitor your Facebook conversation and in if the sentiment is negative, it will alert you. Uh, you can use uh, common keywords to bring a human in the loop. So if a user says help or assistance or human or agent or chat, uh, it'll alert you too. And uh, since we're, we've connected Dialogflow, we can also set up these custom alerts. And uh, custom alerts are tied to any intent. You just pick an intent in Dialogflow and it'll alert you here. So now that we have our alert set up, let's uh, let's test our connection to Janice. Here's this conference bot. We'll just click get started. And these are messages that are served by ChatFuel. And you can see that we have our template already populated. Now let's send the bot a message like, I need a car. We know that the template hasn't been trained with this. So this is a uh, fallback that comes from Dialogflow. And you'll see here on the left that we got an alert in Slack. And uh, let's test out some of these other alerts. Let's say uh, the user is angry because they got a fallback response and they just type that. So there you'll see we not only got the no response, but we got that negative sentiment alert. Um, um, say are you human so you'll see now we got that help requested alert so all of these alerts are are really helpful but if you click Janice's reply to an alert and let's do that you'll see that we now have all of these insights right in slack so there's that locale gender time zone there's the profile picture that's me and what I'll want to do is I'll just want to click this link and you'll see here, I'm going to join this channel. Janice has fully transcribed that messenger conversation inside of Slack. There you'll see the channel was created. We call these transcript channels. And there's my username. And there it is too. That's my name on Facebook. That's my avatar. And uh, I can, uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to retain the user because my bot seems to be struggling. Uh, you sound upset. taken over to help you so you'll see if we jump over to the messenger side here that message was pushed to the user now I'm gonna send another message thanks for helping notice how the bot didn't respond that's because Janice paused dialogue flow and opened up a live chat session with the user. So the user can say something like, no problem. And I'm able to uh, help the user live. Now, what's really interesting is that this isn't just a live takeover. This is what we call live training. Now, let me show you how live training works. You see how Janice responds to every message? Well, you just click that link. And I can train dialogue flow right off of the transcript. Now, this is really helpful. You might have uh, a developer working in the dialogue flow interface, um, but you might have sales, marketing, customer service, all managing the chat with the user, managing that customer experience. And so they can be active participants in training dialogue flow too. Can't do anything too sophisticated, but it's really helpful for things like this. So here's the user's message, and it triggered the default fallback intent. Let's change that. We could save it as a new intent. We can add it to an existing intent. Or we could just reply and create a new intent. Let's do that. Angry user. 
Okay, and here's what users say. So that message has now been added as a training phrase to this intent called angry user. And so we don't have any responses, so let's add a response. Um, we can add a text response. You sound upset. Uh, say human to connect with a live agent. And so now you can see here your responses. And you can add all different types of responses. Text, quick replies, custom payloads. And I'll get into this as well a little bit later. So um, what's really nice is as you're chatting, if the user says, um, says that message while you're chatting live, that I have this green send to user button here. So if the user sends... Uh, a message that triggers an intent as I'm chatting live I just need to click this button and uh, you know it'll send the message to the user in this case I'm already chatting with them live so I might train a different response but you get the idea is that uh, you can actually train the bot to learn from the conversation and chat with them live to retain the user in the process so it's really really effective so let's close this Let's go back to our direct message with Chan uh, Janice. And uh, one of the things that Janice does is it provides a few different training modes. So let's just say train to Janice. And uh, I just showed you what live training was about, which is definitely a really cool feature. Uh, but we also create a training channel directly inside of Slack. And if you just click training channel, and you can see it highlighted here. Uh, you can just click this link. So here's how this training channel works. All you need to do is send messages like, how does this work? And you'll see these messages are, are coming directly from Dialogflow. So I'm actually chatting with the Dialogflow agent. Um, all I need to do is click these replies. And uh, you can see how... Uh, Dialogflow AI becomes accessible to everyone on my team, so I don't need to be uh, in in Dialogflow's interface to actually be an active participant in training. I can be in sales or marketing or customer service, and I can invite other people to this channel. Like I can invite Mike, who's on my team, and we can do this together. Um, so we can accelerate our automation. You'll see how this message that I sent triggers the default. Um, and uh, what I want to do is I'm going to want to change that. And uh, let's save this as a new intent. And you'll see that in our responses, here's what users say. How does this work? Which is also the name of the intent that we created. And uh, if I go into what would you like to do, I want to add a chat fuel redirect. And the chat fuel redirect, all I need to do is enter the name of the of the block in chat fuel so this is really helpful for chat fuel users because this requires some custom payload which is a block of code um, that you would normally need to do in the dialog flow interface well janice writes the code for you and saves it in dialog flow you just need to enter the name of the block so this is really helpful um, for training because you don't have to code anything and so there are other management capabilities within Slack. It's not intended to be a complete replacement of Dialogflow, but we've certainly kept in mind the things that people in operational roles might want to do, and they can do that directly within this workspace. And so all we need to do is just test it out. Uh, how does this work? And you'll see that it hasn't been trained yet, but we can just send another message. How does this work? And Dialogflow will eventually catch up. And there you go. So you got to give your AI a little bit of time to train, uh, but then you can quickly test out uh, your messages what users say and your responses right here in slack and uh, developers can be working from dialog flow people in operational roles or if you're an agency your client can be working from slack 
and you can be uh, training the bot together. And if one last thing I want to show you is if we go back here, you see how this channel is lit up, this transcript channel? Well, you'll see here that uh, Janice will monitor the conversation, and if there's been no activity, uh, Janice will automatically resume the bot. So if I go back to here and I say, hi. Now you see how the bot responded. So you might get busy and you might forget to resume uh, the bot. So Janice will do that for you. So if you want to pause the bot again, you can just send another message. Or you can just say slash pause and enter the number of minutes. And Janice will keep the AI responses paused for as long as you need. Pause minus one will keep your live chat session indefinitely until you manually resume. So... That's essentially uh, the core capabilities of Janus. Helps you train, monitor, and fix problems fast. And it's built right into your team-based workflow. So multiple people can be active participants in the management of your conversational experience.